So in this video, I want to talk about very quickly, what is Azure AD Cloud App Discovery and why do you want it? And it really comes down to this, organizations today are using a lot of cloud services, be it Azure, Office 365, Google, Dropbox, Facebook, whatever. And that's a problem. Because what happens is you might have different basically identities for each of these cloud services, a different username, a different password. And that can be troublesome for users to remember all these different passwords and accounts, or they use the same password. So then if one of those companies you're using gets hacked, then they know the password for every cloud service and your own company for that user. It's also a pain for provisioning when you get a new user and deprovisioning. When someone leaves the company, I have to very, very quickly go and remove all those other accounts from those partner services. So one solution is federation. Federation enables me to use my home realm, i.e. my own local Active Directory account, in all of those partner services. And there's a number of different ways this is done. There's SAML tokens which contain claims about the users. There's WS Federation that can pass those tokens, OAuth, etc. But maintaining all those federations is cumbersome. And so one of the great things Azure AD does is it's already federated with a huge number of companies. If I go and look at add and add an application from the gallery, you can see Azure AD is federated with 2,558 applications currently. Now, some of these support true federation. Some of them have APIs if required to enable objects to be created on that partner organization. Some of them don't. So for some of them, it's more of a credential stuffing technique. A username and password is cached in Azure AD and then sent to that cloud service when users connect to it through the myapps.microsoft.com, the user portal. And one of the nice things I can do is I can even set the account. So think of a corporate Twitter account. I don't want to give that password to everyone in my marketing department. So instead, I could actually add Twitter actually through my Azure AD add it to the users and I specify the username and password. My users never see that password. It can even roll the password over so it automatically changes periodically. So this is a fantastic, and I think one of the biggest benefits of Azure AD, it's a federation broker. I just have my identity in Azure AD, which is federated with on-premises, and then I just add these applications to the users or groups of users that need them. Very, very simple and powerful for me. But one of the challenges you may face is, well, how do I know what applications I need? How do I know what applications my business users are currently using? And that's very difficult to find out. And that's exactly what the Azure AD Cloud App Discovery does. Now that Cloud App Discovery, if I look at there's the free basic and premium SKUs of Azure AD, it's a feature of the premium Cloud App Discovery along with kind of the rich helps, multi-factor authentication, self-service password reset with on-premises right back, huge numbers of powerful features, but it's part of the premium. And what it does very simply is it deploys an agent to all of the machines in your company, and then any connection to a cloud service, be it HTTP or HTTPS, even if it's from a browser or from an app, will now get captured and sent into a cloud service where I get a nice portal to go and see, well, what cloud service is being used in my company? Now, to set it up, it's very, very simple. I can literally do new. I would want to go into the gallery. So I could search the marketplace and I could do cloud app discovery. There's Azure AD cloud app discovery. I would then just select that. And I'll say, yes, I want to create that. So I would just hit create and it would pin it down to my start board by default. And that's exactly what I've done already. So I've already gone ahead and that's how you get started. So I just go and add, I search the marketplace for Azure AD Cloud App Discovery and I create an instance of that. And that what that's actually going to give me is my Azure AD Cloud App Discovery down here. The only thing you really have to do to get started is I go into my settings and I have to configure what my notification is going to be for the users when I deploy the agent. So I do manage agent 
user consent option, and I have to select one of these. So I've done no notification or consent. So they don't know I'm doing this. Now, depending on your company, you may have to give them notification that, hey, we're gathering what cloud services you're using because they may be using work and personal. So maybe you have to let them know. Maybe I require their consent before I do this. So I select the option that applies and I click update. Once I've done that, the option to download will be available. And what this downloads is a zip file. So I hit download, it downloads a zip file. So here's an example of the zip file. I've expanded that out. So it gives me an endpoint agent setup and a tenant certificate. So this is what's used to make sure when it's reporting the data, it sends it into your tenant. And then I literally just deploy this agent out to all the machines in my environment. Now I can manually just run setup. I can just double click it and it will install on the box. You can tell it's installed because if I run services, what I'll actually see once this actually starts up is, sorry, my name, a Microsoft Cloud App Discovery endpoint agent. So it's doing that capture. So I've deployed it to a few machines, Windows 7 and above, and it's now going to capture the cloud services that I'm accessing. And Microsoft has a great getting started guide regarding cloud app discovery that talks through exactly what I just showed. And it also has documents on pushing out the agent using configuration manager and using group policy. And they're probably going to be the two. Or if you have another enterprise software deployment solution, great, use that. All I'm really doing is pushing this out. There's a quiet switch which basically just means, hey, it's not going to prompt for anything. I don't require any interaction with it. So that's really just the key part of doing this deployment. So there's the different ways. So review those documents, depending on which one you're going to use, and deploy that client out. Once it's deployed to all of the machines in your environment, within about 10 minutes, you should see data start to appear in the Cloud App Discovery. And there's a number of different things it shows. I can see the number of applications for each day, even hour, that are being accessed. I can see the number of users. And I can see the number of agents I have deployed and that are reporting data. So for example, notice I have managed and unmanaged. So managed are applications I've already created the federation through my Azure AD tenant. So things like Azure Office 365 unmanaged are services that are being accessed that I don't have a federation with. So the point would be, hey, I'd click on this. I'd get more detail. And from this, I could now see, well, what are the ones that are being used by the most users? Okay, well, Office 365, Enterprise Security Center. So you will see entries that you're like, what is that? I'm pretty sure I'm not using that. Think of things like CNN or some website. It might have a LinkedIn button. It might be using Enterprise Security Center. So these things will show up, even if maybe they're not directly used by users. So there's going to be some noise. And Microsoft are doing efforts to try and remove the amount of noise. But you will see some that are just, hey, these are just being called by certain sites that are being visited. They're not a direct service you're leveraging. But you would go and look and think about what are the key ones, what's used the most. OK, Office 365. Well, OK, let me click on that to get more detail. Okay, so I can see currently that's managed. I can see the users, the amount of data, the web requests, lots more information about it. Maybe what users? So I click users, and that's showing me the users that are leveraging those cloud services. So this gives me a huge amount of insight into the cloud services being used in my organization. And I would use this as the basis to prioritize, well, which app should I federate first through my Azure AD? I can just click on users, and then I see, well, here are the top users using applications. Well, John, he's doing a lot. What ones is John using? So I can see I'm using 11 different applications there. So I get all this information. I can filter, I can search, etc. So that was it. Uh, super quick, and I can create reports from this. I can get information downloaded. But the whole point of Azure AD Cloud App Discovery 
is that it's given me insight into the cloud services being used in my organization. It's a super small agent deploying to each machine. There's no other infrastructure required because it reports up to a cloud service. And I get these nice dashboards to go and query and find that information out and then use that as the basis for adding federations through Azure AD for the most commonly used apps. Hope this was useful. Thank you.